church welcome back church welcome we just want to welcome you back to a deliverance series part four four can i be delivered why would he set me free come and see come and seek the lord and ask the lord so we're coming to you to finish up the four part deliverance series on a revival that we have coming up <clears throat> so let's jump right into it lord we pray that you will uh cover us with the blood of your son Jesus Christ we pray that you will cover us with the full armor of God Lord gird our loins with the belt of truth the breastplate of righteousness we are made righteous through the washing of the blood and the forgiveness of sins shod our sandals with the gospel of peace that we may walk in peace because you are the Prince of Peace he that is in me is greater than he of this world amen and amen to that Lord so, Lord, we just come before you and we ask you to help us, Lord. And then also the shield of faith, Lord. Your word says we walk by faith and not by sight. And faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. The helmet of salvation. We pray that you will give us the helmet of salvation. That we will we'll wear the helmet of salvation. That you will give us salvation, Lord. That we may receive salvation. And the sword is the word, is the spirit. We stand in the word. We put our feet planted and rooted in the word and amen and amen to that lord so that's where we're at this morning lord um we're going to read matthew 12 23 through 29 then one was brought to him who was demon possessed blind and mute and he healed them so that the blind man both spoke and saw and the multitudes were amazed and said could this be the son of David? Please note here, when Jesus cast out a demon, the word says that they were healed. So when he set someone free that's tormented by a demon, they are set free. The word of God says that they were healed. So you need to take note of that. So that the blind man and the mute man both spoke and saw. Amen and amen to that. Could it be the demon caused the blindness? and both the muteness in this man Jesus both healed him spiritually and the removal of the demon he removed the, the spiritual demon that was uh, bringing this uh, mutant death upon him and naturally Jesus healed the eyes and restored his sight because he was mute and blind right he has sight of 2020 now so when he cast this demon out he laid hands on him and he both could see and hear speak amen and amen to that lord so now he can have vision because does not the word say that we perish for lack of vision he was mute but now he can speak his tongue was loosed uh jesus restored his vocal cords he's able to speak i bet you old boy could sing a hymn right a tune man oh that he had he he wasn't able to speak and he was deaf and mute and yet he Jesus restored him he healed he healed him by removal of the demon and then he restored his vocal cords and he restored so he could uh, speak and see so that's how Jesus is with us he not only delivers you but he heals you Lord we ask that you restore our eyes our ears and our heart to the truth the Lord our God Jesus Christ now when the Pharisees heard this, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. You know, oh, demons are fake. They are not real, made up. That Bible you believe was written by men, watered down, translated so many times that it's just fake. It's not reliable. Yes, it is the written inerrant word of God yes it was written by 40 men inspired and written by the hand of God what do you mean is it written by the 40 men 40 men who most were eyewitnesses of the council that took place and the Holy Spirit was filled these 40 men that wrote this word so that is what makes it an inerrant word of God because it is a living breathing word of God amen and amen to that so yes, uh, the Holy Spirit himself led these 40 men 
most who were eyewitnesses of these accounts, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. We have written accounts of eyewitnesses of the life, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus even showed himself publicly to the 12 disciples and to over 500 eyewitnesses on one account after his resurrection from the tomb. And this is located in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 11. And Paul is the author of this. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 11. Read it. So right here. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he has rose again on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, Simon, then by the twelve, we just stated that, and after that he has been seen by over 500 brethren at once of whom greater part remain of the present so they're still even at this time of the writing they were still even much alive and present but some had fallen asleep meaning some have went to be with the lord right so amen and amen to that lord after that he had seen he was seen by james then by the apostles then last of all he was seen by me and this is a the Apostle Paul writing this writing as by one born out of due time because remember the twelve walked with Jesus our brother Paul Saul known as Paul was persecuting Jesus's followers and Jesus came to him on the road to Damascus and he accepted the Lord and Jesus Savior as his Savior and it changed Paul from that day and that's what God is going to do for you today he's gonna to save you he's gonna heal you and he's going to deliver you and he's going to heal you from your sicknesses and diseases hence the tomb is empty until this very day that's right the tomb is empty till this day amen and amen to that hence the risen King King of Kings Lord of Lord that is our Lord and Savior the Lord Jesus Christ he paid it all on the cross for you he paid it so that you can be healed he paid it so that you can be delivered and he paid it for the salvation of the whole world and all children of this world are his but some choose not to accept the Lord Jesus Christ so that is up to you I pray that this word ministers to you today though that that he will touch your heart and that your eyes and ears are open to his word. Amen and amen to that. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, by what? If Satan cast out Satan, then by his kingdom will be divided and his kingdom will not stand. So Satan is not cast. They're saying Jesus was casting out demons by Beelzebub. And, and that was just a lie because they couldn't accept the truth because he is the truth. And he just commands a demon and they have to flee. So look, look at this. At what he is saying here. Christians, for example, all believers are children of God. Yet we distort his word, the truth, the gospel, causing us to divide. And what I mean by division is religions. That's why we have so many religions today. Um, we water down the gospel for numbers, for people, and for money, and, and for mighty, the old mighty dollar, because we want to tickle people's ear. We don't want to tell them the truth because we don't want to offend them because they might not listen to me. They might not come to my church. They might not watch my videos. They might not watch what I post. You know, so we water it down and we are letting God down and, and we are letting his people down because we are deceiving them, least leading them into lies and that's damnation and we don't do that. No, we don't do that at all. We no longer preach uh, the gospel uniting the people uh, we we preach a false gospel which is watering down and causing great division between the believers and just causing great division in all the churches 
Look at the way even today how we have so many churches and they don't like each other. If we were all in Christ, would we really be like, oh, I don't like such and such religion. Oh, I don't believe in such and such. And they're this and they're that. And we throw darts and everything at them. Instead, we should be praying that God draws them near to his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, until repenting, until salvation, where they can come to believe and trust in him. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom does your son cast them out? Therefore, therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Jesus casts out the demons by the authority that was given to him by his Father. And the Father has sent his Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, to cast out demons, edifying the kingdom of God, bringing glory to the Father, honoring the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we thank the Holy Spirit, and he does the work of the Lord, setting people free from bondage, setting you free, ministering to you today, telling you that you are in bondage. If, if you have strong yokes, around your neck you have bondage you are just you have a, a chains around you you have addictions you have multiple uh, cases of maybe even demons in you being demonized you either have a demon in you that is causing all kinds of trouble and all kinds of sickness and disease or you have a demon that is attached to you that you are allowing to do the will of satan because you are disobedient to the lord and we need the lord I ask that you just forgive us for our sins and our trespasses this morning, Lord. We ask that you forgive us, Lord. We want to be healed and delivered and saved today, Lord. And only you can do that. We ask that you send your spirit, Lord, the spirit of God, to heal us, to save us, and to deliver us today. We are in revival for deliverance. We are seeking deliverance. We have come to you with four different... Uh, sermons on deliverance, four different angles of being delivered, and we are ministering deliverance, and God is here to deliver, and He's the one that saves, He's the one that heals, and He's the one that delivers, and He will do that for you. Amen and amen to that. Or can How can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless, the first bind, unless he first binds the strong man and he will plunder his house? He is not with me is against me and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad that's what the lord says so here's my notes you have to use his word and bind that strong man the demon rebuking him with authority power that he gave to you walking in and to walk in his power his authority amen amen that there is power in his name the name every knee will bow down and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. No other name than the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Are we with the Lord? Yes, we are. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's right, Lord. As for me and my house, me and my children, Lord, we will serve you, Lord. And I pray that you cover us with the blood and you cover us with the armor of God and that we continue to walk in it and cover the people for the four nights of revival that we're having on april the 10th i mean the 7th through the 10th lord and we just pray that you will lead us and guide us into all truth and that you will send your word forth for healing salvation deliverance and baptism with the holy spirit lord amen and amen to that sheep and wool clothing corinthians 12 for such are false wit apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ and no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness so his demons transform themselves into minister of righteousness that's why you have people that are ministering the word of the antichrist telling you that jesus is not lord he is not god he is not the son of god nor is he god on earth that is a, a, a 
the antichrist that is doing that and look what it says they they turn into ministers of unrighteousness man whose end will be according to their works here's my note satan sends his disciples out to preach a false gospel jesus causing you to believe in a false god deceiving you with half truths changing just one word from the word of truth just like uh, Satan, he did in deceiving Eve in the, in the garden, twisting one word. Now that's why they will tell you Jesus is not God, nor is he the Son of God. That's right, they will not say that. And, they, and you can test the spirits too. And they, they will not tell you that Jesus is Lord. So you have just been introduced to the spirit of Antichrist. They deny Jesus is God on earth, and Jesus is not the Son of God. God has no son. The spirit of Antichrist, Satan's evil spirit. So 1 John 4, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the and to the flesh is God. That Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. So every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. He is here. All you have to do is look on YouTube, look at some videos. You'll see how everybody comes against Jesus Christ telling you that he is not the Son of God, nor is he God on earth. Right here, you are of God, little children, and overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in this world, and that is Satan. He that is in you is Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, who found you and saved you and delivered you and healed you and brought salvation unto you. And he that of this world is Satan, who brings death, destruction. He wants to destroy and, and kill and steal from you, right? The spirit of Antichrist is here. All religions, I mean all religions, as well as the world, all people of the world come against Christians who believe in Jesus Christ. All religion, and I mean all religions, people come against Jesus, they will tell you very politely, Jesus is a prophet. He was born of Mary. He did miracles. He even went to heaven, but Jesus is not the Son of God, nor is Jesus God on earth. Israel is the Son of God, not Jesus. Let's ask God to remove the spirit of Antichrist. Then go read Isaiah 9, 6. So y'all that don't believe to say uh, Jesus, Jesus doesn't have a son. Isaiah 9, 6. A son, a child is born. A son is given. Amen and amen to that. Go read it. Isaiah 9, 6. Ask the Lord to open your eyes and ears. You have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in this world meditate on that he that is in me he the spirit of god the father is in me and he the holy spirit is greater bigger tougher and carries the authority of the father his father and he is the one he is one with the father amen and amen to that jesus come and seek deliverance come and ask him to deliver you today Ask him for deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen to that. A spirit of infirmity, Luke 13, 10 through 17. Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And she was bent over and could in no ways raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to himself and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he, and he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Woman, 
you are loosed from your infirmity. He commanded the evil spirit to leave. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified. He healed her. Amen and amen to that. So Jesus is teaching in the synagogues on the Sabbath. What is the Sabbath? The Sabbath is Saturday, right? Then Jesus, seeing her, seeing the spirit of infirmity, causing her to be bent over and could in no way raise herself up. He called to her and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. He removed the spirit of infirmity. Next, he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight. Remember, she had been bent over for 18 years. The spirit had her hunchbacked over, right? Couldn't stand up. Just like the lady who bled for 12 years, right? These are infirmities, these are sicknesses. Uh, the, the lady who got healed for 12 years didn't have a demon, but she had sickness, right? So, he removed the spirit of infirmity. Next, he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made well. And she glorified God. I love that the first thing that she did was give glory to God. Thanking Him, praising Him, worshiping Him, bringing glory to Him. So, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, the father of faith, who Satan has bound, Think of it, for 18 years, Satan had this lady bound for 18 years. He's telling you, think about it. Shouldn't I loosen her? You loosen your donkey and your ox on Sabbath, but I can't heal on the Sabbath? My father, until this day, their scripture says, and when he, this is Jesus saying my father, he, so he's talking about his father, God, does work on the Sabbath until this day. 18 years. So be loose from this bond on the Sabbath. <laughs> Lord, you're crazy. And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame. And all the multitude rejoiced from all the glorious things that were done by him. The rulers were upset for the healing, casting out of the spirit of infirmity that tormented this girl, this lady, this woman for 18 years. And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The truth will cut between bone and marrow. The spirit and the flesh, the truth shall set you free, and you will be freed indeed. And all of the glory, all of the glory to our Father through His Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. We thank you for what you're doing today. We thank you for this ministry and this sermon and this deliverance that you are sending forth. And we ask that you send forth your word for the deliverance series that we're going to have in April, the weekend of April the 7th through the 10th, Lord on revival and, 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 and being set free for deliverance, Lord. So the truth will cut between the bone and the marrow, right? So it, the truth will set you free. So you need to be set free. Come and seek the Lord today. Come and see. Come and ask. Come and seek Him. And I will stand with you and believe with you and He will do the works and He will set you free. Not I. I can't do nothing, bro. I'm just standing with you and believing with you. And why do I stand and believe with you? You know why? You know why? Because Satan had a grip on me. Satan came and tormented me. Satan came to my house and was trying to kill, steal, and destroy, just like he says. And you know, the Lord saved me. And because the Lord saved me and Satan came after my children, my Lionel, my Destiny, and my Anthony, I, I told the Lord that he made a mistake because now that I'm saved, not only will I fight for me and my family in the kingdom, but I will try to win as many souls to the kingdom that I can because Satan came to my house and he came to my house for my son Lionel and he came for me and he came for our souls. And because of that, and because of that, I give my heart to God and because I love him and choose to, I choose to spread the gospel and to minister to many souls and win as many souls to the kingdom for his honor, for his glory, and for his kingdom. Amen and amen to that. So that's why I do what I do.
Well, it looks like the rulers in the synagogues, and they, they were really upset with Jesus because he healed the lady on Sabbath. And they said that there are, you know, six days to come and be healed. Come on those days for healing, but not the Sabbath. So he, he healed her on the Sabbath. Eventually, he would go to the cross, this being one of the very many reasons for crucifying our Lord Jesus Christ. True deliverance, he delivers, he sets free. Come and be set free. So the Lord, you know, he would go around preaching and teaching and healing and casting out demons and setting people free. And on this particular case, he did it on the Sabbath. And the leaders of the synagogues were very upset about it. They said that this cannot, this cannot be a man of God because he heals on the Sabbath. But the Lord says that our Father works until this day on the Sabbath. So he is doing the work of the Father, the will of the Father. And for doing that, he was persecuted and also taken to the, to the cross. But look what Jesus tells them. Hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it for 18 years. Be loosed from this bound on the Sabbath. Amen, Lord. We're glad that you heal on the Sabbath. We know that you heal yesterday, you heal today, and you will heal tomorrow. And healing that we are asking for and seeking for today, Lord, is um, healing that comes to the body through demonic spirits. So your word says when a demonic spirit is cast out, brought down, uh, made to leave, cast out, that that spirit is, is gone and that spirit will come back with seven of his friends. But your word says that if we seek God and keep pressing and pushing to God that you will remove those evil spirits and when, when you remove those evil spirits, a lot of times they have infirmities like the deaf and dumb spirit that cause the man not to speak and to be mute. And when you release that man, cast that spirit out, he was now able to speak and hear. And he was healed. So we are healed whenever uh, we have a demon that is cast out from us. And the Lord who casts out the demon, not I. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. Doesn't he say that... Uh, Jesus, uh, God casts out Satan by the, his finger, by the finger of God. And the Holy Spirit casts out the demons. Amen and amen to that. And that's what we believe and that's what we are praying for this morning. We are seeking deliverance, Lord. We thank you that you are here to deliver your children from the bondage that they have and that they are ensnared in that they are drawn into this world. You can set them free. And this morning, if you want to be delivered, if you want to be set free, if you want to come to God and say, I'm in bondage, I have a chain around my, my neck that's dragging me down and pushing me down. And your word says that your uh, yoke is light and easy and come take it. And Lord, I want your yoke. I'm tired of living this life that I live. I'm tired of being... Uh, everything up to me, me deciding everything, and I'm failing. I'm failing me, my family, and I'm failing you, God. And I no longer want to fail you. I want to give my heart to you. I want to be delivered from this demonic oppression that's in me, this demonic activity that I have taken place in, this demonic doors that I leave open even as a Christian. Man, I have doors open and Satan comes and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy and he comes to harm and to hurt me and my family and my loved ones and to hurt your kingdom and to stop me from working in your kingdom for the Lord. So think about it. They still hold this tradition today and they all fail at it at some point. Holding on to the Old Testament, refusing the New Testament. Jesus Christ, causing them not to believe in the one true God, the Creator, the Father, Jehovah, His Son, Jesus the Christ, and His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the one true God that y'all refuse to believe in. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord to open your heart to Him, to Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I pray that you draw them into your Son. 
I pray that you will open their eyes and ears. And this this morning we are praying for the spirit of Antichrist because the spirit of Antichrist goes around denying Jesus Christ as Lord, denying that he is the Son of God, denying that he is God on earth, denying that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. Because I know it doesn't say it in the Bible, but when you read your Bible, in the beginning it talks about uh, God created. And then it uses the word uh, created, which if you go back, to the to the written text it's Elohim and Elohim is God's is plural so right there there's introduction to the to God's which is the father and the son and then if you keep reading it says the holy spirit hovered over the face of the earth boom right there you got father son holy spirit in the very first paragraph of the of the bible so you just refuse to believe it, and that is why you are stuck, and that's why everybody hates Christians and persecutes Christians because we believe in the one true God, and God protects us, and God covers us, and y'all come at us with all these lies that y'all have been told because y'all have the spirit of Antichrist. Y'all that refuse God, y'all that fight against Jesus Christ, y'all have the spirit of Antichrist. And that is all there is to it. In verse 17, And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame. And all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. The truth will cut between bone and marrow, the spirit and flesh, and the truth shall set you free. And you will be free indeed because he set you free. All glory to the Father through his Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we give you the glory, Father. Honor the Son. Glorify the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Doing the will of the Lord. Uh, seeking God. Pushing God. Ministering the gospel to his children. Uh, doing the very thing that we are doing right now. Revival with deliverance. Praying that you will be delivered today. Praying that he will deliver us on the revival that we have uh, next month on April the 7th through the 10th, we're having a revival on four nights. Uh, healing, salvation, deliverance, and baptism with the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen to that. So right here, do you need deliverance? Seek Him. Only you know if you are in bondage. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to see if the enemy, how he is destroying your life. You know, the word says, knock. And the door will be open. Seek and ye shall find. Come, says the Lord. Come. He, remember the parable of the prodigal son. The father welcomes you with open arms. He is wanting you. He, is, he has his arms open for you, waiting for you to run and come home to the father. And that is, that is our God who who's, we serve and we believe and we put our faith in and we put our trust in. He is the one that that fills our heart. He's the one that fills us with the Holy Spirit, with fire and power. You know, so today we have been, this is, we're wrapping up this series on deliverance, you know. And, you know, I, I apologize about earlier. I tried to come at y'all with something different with uh, being outside and beautiful background and all, but it was very noisy and, and I just gave it a shot and I apologize. So I'm trying to fix my error right now. Just uh, so bear with me, please. So, you know, if you need deliverance, let's ask God, God, today we come and seek you this morning, Lord, for deliverance. And we are speaking of deliverance on, on demonic entities. And today we are speaking a lot on the uh, Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, because the spirit of Antichrist is here and is powerful. And it is, it is trying to destroy the kingdom of Jesus. And us Christians, we fail because we even say, oh yeah, that Bible, we're supposed to stand firm in his word. That Bible is an errant word of God. And we believe it. But what do we say? Oh yeah, it was man, it was man made. It was, uh, it's got errors in it. They've taken words out and they've added words into it. It's not reliable. It's been stepped down, wrote so many times that, it's unreliable. Well, you know, that's where you fail. 
And that's where the spirit of Antichrist got to you, telling you that that's not a word. If you do not believe that that Bible is the living word of God, and the words that are written in there are for you, and for us, it is a guidebook to life. If you don't believe that and if you don't trust what he says, when he says he walked on the water, when he says he raised Lazarus from the dead, when he raised Jarius' daughter, when he done all these miraculous things, when he walked on the water, when he calls Peter and Peter gets out the boat and walks on the water, these things are unbelievable. He rose from the cross on the third day and now we, we he, he, he paid the atonement for our sins and now we can come to him. That doesn't even make sense. But it is the truth. And if you don't have a truth to stand on, you are standing on a false truth. And you are not standing on the written word, which is the truth. And therefore, you fall and you have no, no morals, no nothing, because you stand on this world's truth. And anti, the spirit of Antichrist comes in and tells you that he is a lie. He is made up. That it's, God does not have a son. He is not the son of God. He is not born from Mary or on earth is a virgin sent from God and God on earth. They will tell you that and that is a lie. And you need to start standing up for God and taking up for God. You quit letting people run over our God. That is your God, your Father. We do not fight them. But we tell them like this, you know, okay, show me in the scripture. Okay, your God is this. Show me this in your scripture where it says about my God. They cannot because their word will never, ever, ever, ever overpower the written word of God, which we know as the Bible. And that is an inerrant word of God. And it is through that word that we're coming to you today, bringing this series of deliverance. We're wrapping it up today, man. So you know, I told you, you know if you're in bondage. You know if you have yokes. You know if, if you have addictions. You know that the world has you. You know this. So right now, Lord, we come to you and we ask you to, Father, to release your children from the bondage, the yokes, the strife, the demonic activity, demonic demons, evil spirits, unclean spirits, contrite spirits, every evil spirit that is of Satan, the spirit of Antichrist. We come against all those spirits by the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, Lord, if you are dealing with bondage and you know you are, let's pray to God and ask God to remove that for you. And you have to receive this by faith and you have to ask God to do this for you. And I'm just standing with you, man, and trying to show you, man, you got to seek God and, and ask God to heal you and deliverance and pray this over you and your family and stand in it, you know. That's what we do. So this morning, Lord, we pray, Lord, for all your children. May you rise, uh, men and women, children of God that need deliverance this morning. So, Father, we ask that you come forth with your word. We have children here, men, women, uh, young adults, young children, Lord. Your word even says that the demons even enter children, Lord. So we all have children in our life as some children, you know, brothers, sisters, parents, you know, whatever the case may be. So, Lord, this morning we are asking that you remove the spirit of Antichrist and you remove all the spirits that are lingering these people, the hate, the rage, the anger, the greed, the masturbation, the pornography, the drugs, the alcohol, Lord, every addiction, every stronghold, every, everything that has us bound, Lord. We bring that to you and lay it at your feet, Lord. And and we have demons in us, Lord. So the people that have demons in them, Lord, may you bind that. Your word says first, you bind that strong man. And then you go and plunder the house, Lord. So we pray that you bind that strong man and that you remove that strong man from this house, Lord. And this house being the temple of God, my body, Lord. And I pray that you will remove that, Lord. I ask in the name of Jesus. An evil spirit, I am speaking to you. I cast you out by the name, by the finger of God, the word says. He casts you out. I cast you out with the power and authority that he has given me, but he does the works. Amen, Father. Release them, Father. Uh, set them free from the bondage, from the yokes, from the, 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 the depression that they have. 
Lord, set them free in the name of Jesus, evil spirit, unclean spirit, demonic spirit. You must leave this individual now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to remove this from you. Command it in the name of Jesus to leave your body. We command you in the name of Jesus to leave this person's body. Leave and leave now in the name of Jesus. You have to leave. You have to leave his body and you do not come back to his body and you do not harm him. And the Bible says that you will come with seven more of your friends. But you know this, that this house will be turned upside down for the Lord. Because I am now a child of God and he has delivered me from you and your seven friends. And I will wash this house with the blood of Jesus Christ. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. He is my God. And if you come back, He is going to get you. And I'm going to tell Him. And I'm going to show Him you. And I'm going to worship Him. And I am going to praise Him and only Him. You have nothing to do with my life anymore. I command you to get out of the life of my life, out of the life of my family, out of the life of my children. I command you in the name of Jesus to leave. You have to leave. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord and he is my Lord and he is my God and I stand with him and I stand with him firmly, my feet planted and rooted in his word. Amen, Lord. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Lord, set your people free from this bondage, this yoke, Lord. I stand with them and I stand with you in your word, bringing your word forth for deliverance, Lord. Use fishers of men to deliver this word and let this word be powerful and mighty, Lord. Even though that video is horrible, Lord, you use this video for your children, Lord. If they maintain it and they watch this video because the first half is horrible, Lord, that, that you will bless them and you will bring deliverance to them because... It is not about my video. It is not about the words and the wind blowing in the mountains and everything. It is about you setting your people free. They are hurting, Lord. We are hurting. We need to set, be set free. So, Lord, we thank you for the deliverance this morning. We thank you for the deliverance that you are sending forth. And we thank you for the deliverance that you are sending forth on the revival starting April the 7th through the 10th, Lord. And we love you, Father God. And we just pray and honor you and we ask that we want to bring glory to your kingdom and honor you, Father. And what we do, we do for you because your people are in bondage, Lord. They need to be set free. They need you. I need you. We need you. So, Lord, thank you for being there. Thank you for that we can come to you. Thank you that even though people may laugh at these videos and... And, 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 and not believe that they can be set free. Lord, it's even you know questionable to me because I'm not setting nobody free. You're the one doing the work, but I believe you and trust you. And your word telling me as we're doing these, these uh, a salvation, healing, and deliverance, and, and baptism with the Holy Spirit, your word shows me. I got scripture that says you sent your word forth for healing. You sent your word forth for demonic deliverance, Lord. So I know that you can do this. So I'm standing with you and I'm believing with you. So thank you for allowing us to come minister the word to you. And you need deliverance and seek deliverance in his name, the Lord Jesus Christ. And stop that spirit of Antichrist. But we don't argue and fight with them. We just know the truth and stand in the truth and tell them that you are a lie. That is a lie. What you are saying is a lie. And this is the truth. Amen and amen to that. We catch you next time, guys. We love you.